before we can compute line integrals on the complex plane, first review how to parametrize curves. For this, we'll have a checklist. So for item one, we forget about the complex numbers to start. So we're going to treat our curve as a subset of the xy plane. To parametrize a curve, we're looking for a function, r of t. t is going to be a real number. When I fix a t, it's going to give me back a point in the plane. So that means we have two functions, x of t and y of t, that represent our coordinates. Now here, we're going to run through the main examples. Now, once I have x of t and y of t, the recipe to go to the complex plane is just to let z of t be equal to x of t plus i y of t. That's going to be your parametrization. Now, when we do line integrals, we're going to be interested in orientation or direction of our curve. So we would need to check that the parametrization that I use coincides with our orientation. If not, it's easy to fix. All you need to do is send t to minus t, and then change your interval from a, b to minus b minus a. So we'll see how that works in an example. Now, first example, we're gonna have a rectangle in the plane. We're gonna have corners zero, zero, three comma two. Our orientation's gonna be counterclockwise. Now, for our first step, I'm allowed to break this up into four different curves and parametrize each of those. So when we do line integrals, it's going to be consistent with what we want to do there. Now, if I do C1, what's happening here? Well, if I'm in the xy plane, we're starting at the origin, which is 0, 0. We're going to go out to 3, 0. So x is going to vary from 0 to 3. Y is never going to change. It's always going to be 0. So a parametrization that I can use, I'm going to let r of t be equal to t comma 0. We're going to let t range from 0 to 3. OK, so if we put 0 in, that's going to be the point 0, 0. If I put 3 in, I'm going to get 3 comma 0. So that's going to sweep out the segment that we're interested in. Now, if I want to go to the complex plane, we let z of t be equal to t plus 0 times i. We have t going from 0 to 3. Now, we want to check the orientation. OK, we actually already did that by checking the 0 and the 3. So it's going to go in this direction. You don't need to check the endpoints. And sometimes you don't want to use the endpoints. OK, but for here, I could pick any two points in our interval. So I'll go with 1 and 2. Then we know we're getting out the points 1 and 2. So they're going to be on the real axis going from here to here. So that's going in the right direction, checking it with different numbers. For C2, we note, OK, we're going from here to here. So the x value is always going to be 3. The y value is going to go from 0 to 2. So I can parametrize using r of t equals 3 comma t as t goes from 0 to 2. Now, note, if I put 0 in, we're going to have 3 comma 0. If I put 2 in, we have 3 comma 2. So we're going from here to here. So we have the correct orientation. So we convert to the complex plane. That gives us z of t equals 3 plus t times i going from 0 to 2 in t. Now, for C3, you get something interesting. So let's take a look. So here, we're going to have our x going from 0 to 3. Our y is always going to be 2. So if we use the natural parametrization, the first one that comes to mind, of r of t equals t comma 2, letting t go from 0 to 3. We check the orientation. So I put in 0, I'll have 0, 2. Put in a 3, I'll have 3 comma 2. That's going to take us from here to here. And that's going in the wrong direction. So the recipe says replace t with minus t, and then put minus signs on the endpoints and reverse the order. So the change is going to be we're going to send r of t to minus t comma 2, 
then this interval is just going to reverse with minus signs, giving me minus 3 to 0. Now if I check the endpoints, what do we have? We'll have 3 comma 2, and I'll have 0, 2. So you'll note now we're going from here to here, which is the correct orientation. Now, I'll let you work out the fourth one, but it's going to be the same idea. If you go with the natural parametrization, you're going in the wrong direction, you use the recipe, then that fixes it. So we wind up with this parametrization here. So that takes care of horizontal and vertical line segments. If we have a slanted line segment, no problem. What we do is, we're just going to find the equation of the line that goes with that segment. We'll let t stand in for x, and then we just need to check the orientation. So for the segment I have here, we have points 2, 2, 1, minus 1. We connect the dots, and then we're going to run from 2, 2 to 1, minus 1. So in that direction. If I find the equation of the line, so we have our equation, point slope form, the slope is 3. Then if we put in our point 2, 2, we get the equation y equals 3x minus 4. So if I want to parametrize, I'm just going to let t stand in for x. So I have r of t equals t comma 3t minus 4. Then we just got to worry about the endpoints, but they're just going to be the x values. So we're going to go from 1 to 2. Now, if we check the orientation, we're going to be going from the point 1 minus 1. Okay, if you put 1 in here, that checks out. Put 2 in here, we get 2 comma 2. So the orientation's in the wrong way. So we're just going to replace t with minus t, and then put minus signs on our interval numbers. So that's going to give me minus t comma minus 3t minus 4. Then we're going to have t going from minus 2 to minus 1. So we can recheck. If I put a minus 2 in here, I have 2 comma 2. If I put minus 1 in here, I have 1 comma minus 1. So that's going in the right direction. Finally, we go to the complex plane. So I have z of t equal to minus t plus, then parentheses, minus 3t minus 4 times i. And then we're going from minus 2 to 1 in t. Now, if you're comfortable with vectors, it's a better way to parametrize line segments, and it puts it directly in complex form. So the recipe is you identify your start point, P, your end point, Q. Okay, and these are going to be in complex form. Then Z of T is going to be equal to 1 minus T times P plus T times Q. Then T is going to run from 0 to 1. One advantage of this form it's already in complex form, and it will be oriented. So if we put in 0, we get P. If I put in 1, I get Q. So we have P running to Q. Let's check our example. So in this case, we start with the complex number 2 plus 2i. Two We're going to end at the number 1 minus i. So we use our formula. It's going to give me 1 minus t times 2 plus 2i two plus t times 1 minus i. So I expand all this out. To condense things, I want to identify where the i's are so I can separate into real and imaginary parts. When I do that, I get z of t equal to 2 minus t plus 2 minus 3t times i. And then t goes from 0 to 1. Of course, we check. So if I put 0 in, we're going to have 2 plus 2i. So that's our start point. If I put 1 in, I get 1 minus i, and that's our end point. So we note we're already oriented as we would like. One last thing to note, this parametrization here looks nothing like the one I got using the previous method. So parametrizations for a given line segment are not going to be unique. Okay? You can come up with as many as you would like.